Hi, I'm Clark Contemptress. Today we're going to talk about how to actively balance a lithium iron phosphate battery. A little while ago, I tore this battery down because it was grossly out of balance. The cells were all charged to different voltages and different percent of charge le level, more importantly. And its BMS was not doing uh, a decent job. In fact, it didn't even appear to be at all balancing the cells. So I tore it apart. I've manually balanced the cells in this battery uh, to be good enough to use. But what we're going to do today is put one of these in it. This is an active balancing circuit. Uh, these uh, come in about two flavors. One flavor is, uh, best way to describe it, it just looks like a whole bunch of capacitors. I believe the technology is called flying capacitor. I don't know a lot about it because I haven't looked into it. Uh, a friend that knows a lot more about lithium than I know taught, told me that they tend to screw up the balance and he might be right, he might be wrong. I just don't know, but I like these. Uh, I found these and I looked up the chip and I read the data sheet and I like its approach. And what these are is three isolated power supplies. So they can take power from one side of them and put the power on the other side of them. That'll make sense in a minute. And then the other important word is isolated. So they can take two power supplies that are actually like in series with each other and treat them like they're completely different batteries. Uh, it won't short them out. Now that you see that there's three and a 12 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery has four cells. So you're going to place this electrically so that one of the little guys is between these two, one's between these two, and the final one is between these two. And what it does is it just looks at the two cells that it's connected to personally and it says your voltage is high and your voltage is low by comparison. So I'm going to take power out of this battery, out of this cell, and actually move it into this cell. And by doing that, I could balance all the cells pretty much. Can't be perfect because there has to be a difference for it to work. Now the passive balancing method, um, and that's what most BMSs use, is just putting a resistor, a load, across the cell that is too high. And by rights that should work. I'm not too sure why this guy doesn't work, but it can't be a fast process. It's, uh, it makes heat. Uh, when you burn power in a, a resistor, um, you're, you're producing heat with that energy. Uh, where this guy is moving the power from one receptacle of power to another receptacle of power, so it doesn't make a lot of heat. We're going to take this battery, we're going to look at two of the cells, because that's all the meters I have, and we're going to um, hook it up and let it start balancing, and then we're going to use, well, my third meter, and find out how many amps it's actually pushing between cells to get them balanced. I think this is going to be an interesting experiment. It shouldn't take terribly long. And, uh, <laughs> well, let's go at it. I've soldered up uh, wires on, on this balancer. I think I'm going to need my glasses for this. And I'm taking advantage of this wire that's already soldered on to the, all the individual cells. This went into the BMS so the BMS could see all the individual voltages. And the wires I chose will plug right into these little uh, plugs. So when I plug this together, this thing will be up and working. Now, before I do that, let me get this wire protected or locked down so that I can get to it without it jumping all over the place. I want you to look at my meters here. This meter is on the most positive cell and it is showing that right now it is 3.546 volts. This is on the next cell right beside it, and this is 3.434 volts. So there's a fair difference between them. Uh, not earth shattering, but there's a difference. Um, I chose to display those two cells because they're the most out of balance. But bear in mind, when I hook it up, all the power will move 
from wherever it needs to downhill to equalize the voltages of all of the cells. And I think it'd be fun just to hook this up right now. Now, what I'm gonna do is plug these into the little receptacles and I have to be very careful not to cross the wires because these are hooked right to the batteries. Um, of course, it would just melt the wire real fast, but still, that's a bad thing. I don't want to do that. Okay, I got two left. Last one, and it should come to life. Okay, well, first off, this light came on. That tells me that this guy is active. These guys aren't, so I guess they see their world as balanced enough. But this guy says, nope, something's going on. And I'm going to hook my amp meter up here to one of the wires. And we'll take a reading. Currently calibrated to zero. Okay, we're passing over one amp between mostly between these two cells, I believe. Yeah, it would be between these two cells. Uh, probably a little bit between these two, but we don't know this voltage. Anyway, we are charging this cell off its neighboring cells. Now look what's happening to the voltage. This is now down to 3.526, 3.525. That voltage is going down. At the same time, this is 3.441, and it will be coming out, it's 442. You see how it's balancing. It's doing the magic it needs to do. So, it would suck if you had to take down a battery that's in a sealed case. But if you're building your own battery, or if in the future your battery just will not take a charge, you try to charge it and it shuts itself down internally, look at my other video, I go into it deeper. But almost definitely you've got an out of balance condition, and for like almost no money you can fix that. If I had lithium batteries on the boat, which I do, I would buy a few of these and just put them someplace because you might need them sometime. They're just so cheap and they work pretty good. Now, let's talk about the problems with them because nothing's perfect. If you read the data sheet or at least the ad uh, on, on um, Amazon or eBay, and that'll be linked down below in the video, you'll see that these can move 1.2 amps. That sounds really good. Well, they move 1.2 amps at the maximum voltage difference. You can see this is already coming down. Now it's 0 0.8, 0 0.79. The voltage difference is closing down. I think they, they move a lot of power, plenty of power. That's not their problem. Their problem is they can move too much power for their own good. If your battery is grossly out of balance, like this battery was before I put my efforts into balancing it, this little guy will burn himself right out. Um, it really only should move 1.2 amps. If you try to ask it to be moving more because there's a bigger voltage difference between any of the cells, that would be bad. Is that an important consideration? Well, if your battery is in balance and this only turns on as it gets out little by little, I really don't think it'd be a problem. Um, if you were concerned though, or you had a great big battery, you know, uh, we have some 400 amp hour batteries in here and it's gonna take more power being moved to be able to balance these out. Two things I could see doing. I haven't tested the first one, but I see no problem with it whatsoever based on the circuit. I don't see why you can't use a stack of these where you essentially put them all in parallel, give them a little cooling room, and each of them would kind of share the load because they have an internal resistance and that makes things balance out. So if you had several of these, you'd be able to move several amps. Another thing you can do if you're not in a big hurry, because these are real fast. I mean, look, this guy's almost done with his job. He's down to 0.6 amps of uh, um, current movement already. It's coming it's half of what it was. I would think seriously about adding something we call a current limiting resistor. And all that would be, it would be a resistor in each of these lines. And if you could get like a quarter uh, ohm resistor, wouldn't have to be terribly big. Just two watts would be plenty. I think um, 
that would do the job just fine. There would be a voltage drop across the resistor when it's actively working, which would say don't work so much, but then of course once it throttled itself back, that voltage drop would go away. It would just slow down the process. Uh, even probably a half ohm resistor would do the job. And I did find some of those on, uh, on Amazon, so I'll put a link to those down below. Uh, what would I do? What will I do? I don't know if I'll end up with this battery or somebody else, but I'll, I'll make it as good as it possibly can be when it leaves the bench. I will probably just use one of these just the way it is, because this is only a 100 amp hour battery, and it will be in really good balance when I put it together. The main reason I warn you of that, that condition is if you put one of these on a badly balanced cell, it will try to fix the cell, but it might sacrifice itself doing it. So maybe some hand balancing first, and that's all in the other video. Um, the other end of it is hook it up. If it melts in the process of fixing your battery, grab another one. They're like seven bucks. Hi, I'm Clark from After Editing. Um, I don't use a script on these videos, and one of the things about not using a script is sometimes I come up with better ideas later. So I'm going to share two ideas on that last concept. First off, if you're going to use a current resistor, it's not necessary to put a resistor on all of these leads, just on the middle two, as it were. So if I was to use this resistor, I would put it here and a brother for it here. That way, this cell has one resistor in it, this cell has a resistor in it, um, and of course, same for the last two. So, that would be an easy way to do that. And then the other thing is, if you use a bank manager to manage your lithium battery, and you should, of course, not just because I make them, it's actually a very, very good product for taking care of lithium. It doesn't really let the lithium come out of that flat area up into the hockey stick. It, it can sense the batteries are fully charged just before they start doing that. It's really good at that. The downside is you wouldn't be exercising your balancer. So you might want to periodically take your bank manager, uh, take it out of charge to 100% mode where it should be most of the time, and put it in charged voltage. And then give it a slightly hard, higher voltage and let the battery come up into that scary territory, um, that will let the balancer balance. Now, if you're using a balancer that, you know, you don't want to push too hard, when you do that special equalization charge, just slow down the charge. Do whatever you have to do to the rest of your system so it's not putting out. This is not the day to run your alternator at 170 amps. This is where you want to charge it like two, three amps. Let the voltage come up very slowly. Then this guy will have a fine time keeping everything equalized. And at the end of that cycle, you're probably good. Anyway, just wanted to throw those thoughts in. Back to the video. That's about all I have to say about the active balancer. But you know, I got this little masterclass thing going on. There's a playlist. We have a lot of playlists, by the way. If you go into our channel and you go to our playlist, we keep that right up. So if you like the Capable Cruiser series, you'll find just Capable Cruisers all in one space and you can go through and watch all of our back stuff. If you're particularly only one electronics, we have this thing called the Master Class that I'm still adding videos to. And you know, this actually might be part of the Master Class. You guys have been really great at sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. We get a report on that now and like more people are sharing my videos than are commenting. Uh, and that really blows my mind. That tells me that you appreciate what I'm doing and you wanna share it with your friends and there's no higher praise than that. Thank you very much. Bye, I'm Clark on Temperature.